Hey guys, hope you're doing well. In this video tutorial, we're going to build a REST API using Flask Micro Framework. REST stands for Representational State Transfer, and what it is just an architectural style used in modern web development. It defines a set of rules constraints for a web application to send and receive data. So some of you may already know that Flask is a popular micro framework like Django, Bottle, Turbo Gears, Pyramid, and many other frameworks for Python. And since it is a micro framework, it's very easy to use and lacks most of the advanced functionality which is found in a batteries included framework like Django, for instance. Django brings a lot of out of the box tools that's prepared for you. It doesn't give you much of freedom. It's very opinionated in contrast to Flask, which gives you a lot of freedom to do what you want. So um, in Flask application it can start small, for instance, and it can scale up to whatever extent that you like. It doesn't come though with some um, features like the admin site, like in Django. It doesn't also come with a database system like SQL Lite 3, which is the default database for uh, Django. In Flask, you need to set everything manually. And therefore, building a REST API in Flask is very simple. Okay. In fact, there are two ways of creating a REST API in Flask. The first is without external libraries, and the second using Flask RESTful library. And I'm going to show you the first method first, but just to not forget, let's go ahead and install Flask RESTful for the second method. So go ahead and pip install Flask RESTful. All right. And let's close the terminal and let me create a folder. Uh, we'll call it Flask RESTful API. All right, open with VS Code. You can use any text editor you like. Atom, Sublime Text, Eclipse, any, um, any text editor of your choice. And let me create two folders. The first I will call it only Flask and the second I will call it Flask RESTful, Flask underscore RESTful. So only Flask, let's go ahead and create app.py. And Flask not like in Django, we don't create, we don't um, have commands like start project or start app. We don't make configuration steps in settings or um, URLs, for instance. We don't do any of that uh, in Flask. Also, we don't do migrations because we don't have any database set for us. All right, so the first thing that I want to do is I want to import the Flask class from the Flask module. So import um, so from Flask with a small f, which is the module. I want to import the Flask class with a capital F. I also want to import a method called JSONify, which is a method that wraps a dictionary, a Python dictionary, and converts it into JavaScript object notation, which is readable by the JavaScript um, in your browser because the browser cannot treat Python. And also I want to import a method called request for uh, the get post requests. Hopefully you're aware of the HTTP methods. Also I want to create an instance uh, called app, Flask class and the name, which is the Flasks module. This is very important because it lets Flask know uh, where to look for static files and so on. And let's say if name equal to um, main then go ahead and run the app and i want to set the debug mode equal to true for development so every time we make changes in the python files we don't have to disconnect the server and restart it so this is important uh, and actually it saves a lot of time all right and let's have our app decorator and app decorator is used for um, the route is very similar to the path in Django. So we determine a path inside our um, URL patterns in Django. Here I use something called the route decorator. So I say at app.route and in parentheses and in single quotes, I will type just slash and following the decorator usually is the function that I want um, Flask to trigger it immediately. So you don't have to worry about invoking or calling this function. It will work automatically. And I want to return hello world. All right, so to run the file, um, let's actually go to, let's actually uh, modify the name of this folder. Okay, so cd1 only flask 
you need to be in this directory so the file will work and we'll say python app.py all right you see that um, the server is running on the local host on port 5000 let's click on that and we get hello world so what i want to do is i want to add some methods and the methods that i need are post and get methods so uh, i will set methods equal to inside a list i want get and post and by the way the default uh, method for flask is get so if you will not determine get or post the default will be equal to get all right so let's um, actually delete this we don't need that anymore and I will have an if else statement or if statement so I will say if the request dot method is equal to get and the beauty of Python is it's very human readable the syntax is very friendly so it reads almost like English um, if even if you don't understand programming and if you read that you'll understand that if the method or if the request method is equal to get I'm ready to do something so what we want to do we want to declare a variable I will call it just data it will be simple message and for instance we will say happy new year 2021 okay and I want to return um, just a dictionary and the dictionary is in a form of key value pairs as you know so the key here let's say a message and uh, the value could be anything in this case I want to return the data right which will be the message here the happy happy new year so data and as JavaScript cannot read Python dictionary I need to wrap this in JSON phi method so we'll say JSON phi wrap this in parentheses so this is the first API that I want to create the second one I will need to create a separate route for it and basically what it will do it will calculate the cube number of any given number that you will enter so let's um, let's create another route we'll say app dot route and here we'll have our slash like that and I want some sort of placeholder so int num and here you will enter your number basically follow that the methods and the method the only method that I want is get I can leave it empty but just for the sake of clarity I want to um, explicitly write it but you can delete it and it will work then we want our function and I will call the function cube and it will take the number as well okay uh, as a parameter so return also we will need to wrap that in JSONify method and here I want uh, the key value pairs so the key will be in form of string so we'll say cube number of so I want to wrap that in single quotes and I will use the F format and here I will pass the num all right so this is the key and the value is the num to the power of three okay and that's it so let's go ahead and run the server again you can run it from the integrate terminal or uh, if you have the git tool uh, git bash and git GUI uh, you can open it from here and this is the command prompt it has nothing to do with the Linux system um, this is just an interface okay but it has some of um, the Linux commands still it's based on the Unix system which is essentially MS-DOS all right, so let's go ahead and run it from uh, git bash and we'll say only flask. Okay, then python app.py. All right, the server is uh, working, perfect. So let's open Google Chrome manually because I don't have the option to open automatically from um, the terminal or the command prompt so I want port 5000 5000 is flask port and 8000 is Django port enter and boom a message happy new year okay and we have used flask only we didn't use any external libraries and if I want to change the route 
let's have a number and let's have the cube value of that number so for instance let's say 3 enter cube number of 3 27 how cool is that can change it uh, can try other number 35 okay for instance 15 you get the idea all right so this is the first method to create a rest api in flask all right so let's close that we don't need that anymore and let's create app.py okay and flask crestful which we have installed via pip install flask crestful this is an extension for Flask class, um, and this adds support for building APIs in Python using Flask as the backend, of course. And Flask Crestful is very easy to pick up if you're already familiar with Flask. The main building block in Flask Crestful is a resource. So we have resources. Each resource can have several methods. So we have here resources. So each resource can have several methods associated with it, such as get, post, put, delete, uh, head, there are uh, others, connect, there are a lot of um, HTTP methods, but the two most common methods that you're going to see and work with often are get and post methods, okay? So for example, there could be a resource that can calculate the cube of a number like we did with only Flask. So to calculate a cube, for example, we can have a resource for that. Um, and each resource is a class right uh, if you're familiar with object-oriented programming and the concept of inheritance that class can inherit all the features from other class for instance so once the resource is created and defined we can add our custom resource to the API and specify a URL path um, for that corresponding resource all right so enough talk let's code so I want to import from flask module the flask class the JSONify and the request like we did with only Flask. Also I want to import from the Flask RESTful I want to import resource and API. I want to instantiate the Flask class. I will create an app object and so I will pass name as argument. Also I want to create an API object. Okay, and I will call it API. And I will pass app inside it. So I will create, as I told you, classes or resources. So the first class that I want to create, I will call it message. And here is resource, which is the main parameter. Then I will create a function. Notice that there are no app decorators, no routes, nothing. I will create a function directly and I will call it get because I want to get information or get data self and I want to return a dictionary a message as a key and a value I will say for instance days gone is my favorite PS4 video game okay and I want to wrap that in JSONify. So why is it in yellow? Uh, I mistyped it. That's why I didn't identify it. Okay, so this is one resource. Okay, so this resource will return this message or this API. Okay. The second resource or the second class, I will call it square. I want to return the square value of any given number. So let's have another class, we'll call it square resource. And also I want to get self as first parameter and num as a second parameter because there will be an input. And I will return also JSONify and we'll say square. So I need the F string. So square of and I will pass the num. And the value is going to be num to the power of 2. Okay, so basically the same idea as uh, like we did in only Flask, except that we're working with classes or resources. Okay, so we will add the defined resources along with their corresponding URLs now. 
and to do that I will type API dot add resource method and what I will pass is the first class which is the message and the route or the URL similarly with the square class I will pass here square and we want here a placeholder like we did in the cube function also int num and don't forget to say if name equal to main go ahead and run the app in the development environment or uh, while setting the debug mode to true okay exactly like we did in only flask all right let's actually open the integrated terminal and let's enter two flask restful so two flask restful and let's python app.py error uh, because oh this file is not inside the folder be careful this file should be inside the current directory in order to work properly so let's try that again and we have our server running on port 5000 let's open the browser and we get a message days gone is my favorite ps4 video game the message which was set to the default route okay in the default resource okay and if I will make a slash let's say 10 for example we'll have square of 10 is equal to 100 let's change the number 20 square of 20 is equal to 400 so this was how to build a rest API using flask in two methods only using flask and using the flask restful module I hope you liked the video. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next videos.